Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for January 23rd, 2024 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March 2025. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. <clears throat> In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will, be, will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer a comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who are closest to the project. <laughs> if you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your Recording hand. Recording in as progress. Please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Stembridge reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. You're on mute. Yep. Sorry about that. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good, good morning, Mr. Collins. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Ms. Loeb. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Aiken. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Ms. Panato. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. The floor is yours, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first item on the agenda for 930 is approval of hearing minutes. Those minutes, those minutes are from September 12th, September 21st, September 26th, October 17th, October 26th, and October 31st, all from 2023. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion to to approve the approve the minutes. May I have a second? Thank you. Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Logue. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Next, we'll move on to the extension schedule for 930. First, we have case BOA 1066748 with the address of 318 to 320 E Street. The board originally granted this relief on January 29th of 2021, and the first extension was granted until January 29th of, 20, of this year, 2024. This is the applicant's second request for a one-year extension until January 29th, 2025. If the applicant and or their representative is present, will they explain the situation to the board? Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, Miller, and Hanley in Boston. Uh, here on behalf of Jim O'Donoghue and Broadway Land Company, LLC, requesting a uh, additional one-year extension of the zoning relief granted on this project. Um, as Mr. Secretary mentioned, this is the second requested zoning extension on this matter. 
Uh, as far as updates are concerned, since the last uh, extension approval, they are continuing to work towards a building permit, but do need a little more time. They have received BPDA design review stamped plans. Uh, recently, ISD issued them a more information request letter uh, a few weeks ago on January 2nd, and they're working on this final additional information to complete ISD's building permit plan review. Uh, they are working to respond, respond to that more information request letter as soon as possible. So they are nearing building permit eligibility. They hope to have the permit this year. Um, it's very near to issuance of the required building permit to begin construction. So we are respectfully requesting the board's grant uh, of an additional one year extension with the new expiration date of January 29, 2025. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yes. Hearing none, may I have a motion? A motion to extend to 129. 2025. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair sure, also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have case DOA 1066736 with the address of one to two Church Avenue. The board originally granted this relief on April 23rd, 2021. And the first extension was granted until April 23rd, 2024. This is the applicant's second request for a one year extension until April 23rd, 2025. Is the applicant and or the representative of present to explain? Ah. Yes, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Nick Cizula, McDermott, Quilty, Miller, and Hanley in Boston here on behalf, again, of Jim O'Donoghue, this time with American Boiler and Cooling, um, again, requesting a one-year extension. This is right around the corner from the 1, uh, 318, 320 East Street. It's the same applicant, same situation. They just need a little more time. They're working with uh, Boston Water and Soar. They have BPDA design review stamp plans. Um, they're hopeful to have a building permit issued again in 2024. So same request, uh, same situation as uh, the previous request for the same applicant. Um, this one is just uh, an extension till April 23rd, 2025. So a little bit, uh, a little bit further away than the one before. I uh, happy to answer any questions, but very similar to the, to the previous request. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? make a motion to approve an extension, one year extension until April 23rd, 2025. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you all, good luck today, thank you. Next we have case BOA 126. 1925 with the address of 150 Neyland Street. The board originally granted this relief on March 11th of 2022, and this relief remains valid until March 11th, 2024. This is the applicant's first request for a one year extension until March 11th, 2026. If the applicant and the representative is present. Would they please explain to the board? Just to confirm, we mean 2025, correct? Uh, I'm here. That is correct, uh, yeah. Madam Chair. Okay, please proceed. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. That, there might be a typo in that in that form. Thank you for, for catching that. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Don Weist. I'm with the law firm of Dane Torpy at 175 Federal Street uh, in Boston. With me today is a principal of the developer Hudson Group, no, Ron. This is a 22 story, 115 unit project. Um, it will also um, sponsor the uh, development of the 20 unit affordable housing project at Chinatown at 19 Oxford Place, known as Oxford Place 2, in collaboration with the Chinese Economic Development Council. Um, <clears throat> the project is. Um, uh, still working on securing construction financing. 
Um, it is an ideal uh, renewal project for this blighted site. A beautiful design is bringing activation to the street, ground floor restaurant, much needed housing. The challenge for this kind of project is a high rise project on a small floor plate is inherently expensive on a per foot basis. Um, money has gotten very expensive in, in from, uh, for construction loans throughout the course of the past year, and we need those conditions to improve for the numbers to come into alignment. The proponent has used their own funds to correct the blighted condition. There was an old dilapidated nightclub at the site for decades. They've gone ahead and taken that down. They've done the site work. They're prepared to go. Um, we are just waiting for the economic conditions around construction light to improve, and then we'll mess with the project. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I need the dates again. March 11, 2025. Yeah, March 11, 2025. Second. Have a second. Second, thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have case BOA 1258631 with the address of 1027 to 1029 Tremont Street. The board originally granted this relief on February 11th of 2022, and the relief remains valid until February 11th of 2024. This is the applicant's first request for a one-year extension until February 11, 2025. If the applicants and or the representatives present, will they explain to the board, please? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mary Kate Campbell with the law firm Drago and Toscano on 11 Beacon Street. Um, I'm requesting on behalf of our client the one-year extension. Um, the proponent just needs some extra time to modify and make uh, changes to the structural plans as well as finalize financing. Um, but if this is granted, they are um, getting pretty close to be able to submit their full permit package. Okay, any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Our motion to extend to a year from today. Just can you remind me of the date, please, Norm? It's February 11, 2025. February 11, 2025. Is there a second? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1285857 with the address of 362 Weld Street. The board originally granted this relief on March 4th of 2022. And this relief remains valid until March 4th of 2024. This is the applicant's first request for a one year extension until March 4th, 2025. If the applicant and or the representative is present, will they explain to the board? Uh, Madam Chair, this is Javier. I believe the applicant uh, is, had a medical emergency, so they're not here right now. The board can decide to defer it till February 6th hearing, or if they believe they have enough information, they can make a motion to approve this as it is a first time request. Mm -hmm. Right. May I have a motion? A motion to approve the extension to March 4th, 2025. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yeah. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Next, we have case BOA 1079364 with the address of 6 Oakhurst Street. The board originally granted this relief on February 26th of 2021, and the first extension was granted until February 26, 2024. This is the applicant's second request for a one year extension 
until February 26, 2025. If the applicant and or their representative is present to explain to the board, please do so. You have to raise hand here. I'm just going to do a panel with Cam, so if you can unmute yourself um, once you become a panelist. Hi, Cam, can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Cam Raufi. I'm the owner of Six Oakers Street. Uh, originally, we experienced some delay uh, for this project due to COVID and uh, the review by BPDA. Uh, but then uh, last year, we realized that the construction cost has increased considerably. So we had to go back and uh, do uh, additional value engineering to make the project feasible. Uh, we have made uh, great progress and we are planning to move forward. We just need some additional time um, to go through the process. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, I do quickly, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. Yes, please. Uh, can you just, did the value engineering change any of the, the plans that were previously approved? And no. how are you going to be passing along the savings to the, to the buyers? Just curious how that's memorialized as you say in your letter. Sure, um, so we um, we had to work with the structure engineer to, re, uh, to make the design more efficient. And uh, we are, uh, I, uh, the units uh, would be, I, I think the prices are capped by the market price. So we can't uh, uh, really, um, uh, what we did, we reduced the project cost to make it more feasible to uh, proceed. I think with the high interest rates, uh, there is the uh, affordability issue, and uh, we, uh, I think there, that has put a cap on the prices. So the, what we worked on toward was reduce the construction price by making the design more efficient and also um, do some of the project work offsite to uh, Thank you. Sure. Does that answer your question, Mr. Aiken? Yeah, sure. Thank you. May I have a motion? A motion to extend to February 26, 2025. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Lahook? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panado? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1133499 with the address of 117 Coral Ridge Street. The board originally granted this relief on October 8th, 2021. This relief remained valid until October 8th, 2023 which expired. This is the applicant's first request for a one-year extension until October 28th, until October 8th, 2024. Um, at this point, um, would the applicant and or the representative explain the situation to, to the board? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small of a business address at 51 Dobson Road. Um, we're here seeking a one-year extension um, to the previously granted uh, relief that the board um, gave to uh, my applicant, my, my client, um, due to financial constraints with regard to him having to um, change um, finances, um, we are requesting a one-year extension. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? A motion to extend again, I just don't have the date, sorry. October, October 8th, 8, 2024. October 8th, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Uh, no, due to the timely nature of the request, untimely nature. Ms. Panado? Yes. 
The chair votes yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board. Have a good day. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the board final arbiter hearing scheduled for 930. We have case BOA 1523229 with the address of 44 to 46 Winter Street. It is the applicant and or their representative present to explain, explain this to the board. Hi, I'm Mayor. I can see the request on you. Can you hear us? <coughs> Where do you have a, someone on the event you? Oh, okay, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mike Corey of Madoff and Corey, uh, counsel for the applicant. With me, I have uh, my colleague, Mike Cordero. Uh, we, uh, on November 14th of 2023, this board considered an application from our client for a variance to allow a liquor store to be established at this property. Uh, the board granted the, uh, uh, the application unanimously. Uh, subsequently, we found that the address, which was provided by the landlord, was incorrect. They owned the building uh, with addresses 40 to 46 Winter Street. Um, and we had understood, based on the lease, that we had negotiated with the landlord that the space, the, the appropriate address was 44 to 46. After our hearing on November 14th, uh, the landlord said, wait a minute, maybe we have this wrong. It, it's 42 to 40. And I'm wondering why it goes down, but that's, we checked the, um, we checked uh, the assessor's records and they actually have that address. We were hoping that this board as a minor modification to its approval could change the address uh, from the incorrect one that was listed in the application, 44 to 46, to the correct one, 42 to dash 40, uh, Winter Street. Uh, the order hasn't been entered yet. The draft is in there, but we need to fix that. Okay, questions thank from, thank you. Questions from the board? This seems uh, minor enough. Uh, if uh, hearing no questions, may I have a motion? A motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. <clears throat> now we will move on to the recommendations scheduled from the subcommittee scheduled for 9.30. Um, we have case BOA one, one, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll read through the uh, list of uh, recommendation that was um, made for it and then we'll take a motion um, on all of those when we finish. Uh, case BOA. 1529769 with the address of 1301 to 1305 Boylston Street. The motion was approved with proviso. Next, we have case BOA 1519941 with the address of 506 East 3rd Street. The it was was approved with provider. Then we have case BOA 1501014 with the address of 3141 Washington Street. That, this case was approved. Next we have case BOA 1527160 with the address of 188 to 190. Fuller Street, this was approved. We have case BOA 1498625 with the address of 4 to 6 Milton Avenue. This was the first to full board hearing later, later this morning. Then we have case BOA 
1693 with the address of 83 DeForest Street if this case was approved. Next, we have case BOA 1498471 with the address of 92 Wyndham Road. This case was approved. Finally, we have case BOA 1515093 with the address of 14 Tarleton Road. This was approved. Those are the those are the cases from the subcommittee. Thank you. May I have a motion? I'll motion to approve the subcommittee. Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Logue. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Ms. Yes. Aiken. Yes. yes. Ms. Panato. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Uh, before we proceed, I just wanted to uh, remind folks that uh, we have a six-member board, uh, and uh, applicants may ask for an administrative deferral if they choose to do so. Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, moving on to the hearing schedule for 9.30 a.m. Uh, first, we have is case bill. Any requests for different? Oh, yeah. um, at this time, at this time, or no, I'll ask if there are any requests for um, withdrawals or deferrals from the 9.30 time frame. Mr. Stembridge, Attorney Richard Lins, good morning. Uh, 250 Bremen Street for deferral. Uh, with me, Attorney Lins. Second to last case, Mr. Stembridge. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. That would be case BOA 1534938 with the address of 250 Bremen Street. Uh, Attorney Lins, if you would explain to the board. Sure, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and through the members of the board, uh, for the record, Richard Lins, 245 Summer Street, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, we need to re notice this matter. Uh, we identified the uh, notice as having the uh, wrong description. Uh, I believe we've already spoken to Javier and the board about getting this re notice at a new date uh, for March, I believe. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, March, March 12th would be, be the deferral date. Okay, great. Uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to defer until March 12th, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. See you then. Thank you very much. Any other requests for deferrals or withdrawal from the time frame? Yes, Madam Chair, we have one raised hand. Uh, Lindsay Friedman, I just asked, uh, I'm glad you to speak. Hi, yes, um, good morning. My name is Lindsay Friedman with Immersive Game Box. Uh, we are over at 1260 Boylston Street. Uh, we are requesting a deferral to a later date to allow the plans examiner enough time to review. Uh, we submitted our revised stamped plans last Thursday. Okay. Uh, so, so that, oh, well, sorry. Uh, yeah. So that would be case BOA 148 6245 with the address of 1260 Boylston Street. Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, the, the new day would be also March 12th. Uh, okay. 2024. Thank you. May I have a motion? Make a motion to defer until March 12th, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Hearing no other requests for withdrawals or deferrals, we'll return to case BOA 1547345, the address of 17, oh, sorry, 
1457 DFW Parkway. Uh, this would be for uh, Canvas case. Uh, is the applicant and or the representative open to explain to the board? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I also have a note on here that this might need to be deferred to March 12th for an update or refusal. I don't know if the applicant or the representative is here. Okay, well, it sounds like they're not here, so uh, yeah. why don't we uh, make, I'm sorry, Jeff, are you speaking on this, Mr. Hampton? Yeah, I, I thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. I, I don't want to speak out of turn or for the applicant, but that is indeed the case. Uh, the okay. refusal letter had an incorrect uh, violation on it, so they just need to get it corrected. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Motion to defer this case until March 12th. Second. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Mr. Collins. Yes. Ms. Logue. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Ms. Panado. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Okay. Next, we have case BOA 1539233 with the address of 81 Furbush, Furbush Road. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain? There, Mr. Costa on. Can you raise your hand if you're on? Don't see the name. Okay. Okay. Let's I'm not seeing anyone. I don't have a note for this. If we want to do a second call after the 930s, we can. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay. Moving on then to um, the next case we'll defer. So we'll move on to case BOA 1540780 with the address of 32 High Street. It's the applicant, the applicant and all their representatives present. They explain to the board first. Yes, thank you, Mr. Secretary, and good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Fletcher Tilton with the business address of 100 Franklin Street on behalf of the applicant. Uh, also on with me this morning is Adam Glassman from GCD Architects, the project architect. Uh, what we're seeking to do this morning is to gain approval to renovate the existing structure located at 32 High Street, uh, which you can see there in the front of the picture, uh, including erecting a rear addition and rear decks. Uh, we're proposing an addition of approximately nine feet deep by 20 feet wide for the garden level and the first two stories. Uh, we're then proposing a rear pullback on the third story, which you can see kind of on the uh, aerial view there uh, for a third level deck. Uh, this is a three family 2000 zoning subdistrict. The majority of the structures are either one, two, or three family buildings with some multifamily residential sprinkled in. Uh, the existing occupancy, we did confirm its occupancy as a single family uh, with the occupancy committee, and this building will remain a single family structure. Uh, the lot size is 1,400 square feet. In terms of the floor plans, we're proposing the garden level uh, to be finished living space with a family room, office, and one bath. We have a full walkout from that garden level to the backyard. Uh, the first floor would contain the kitchen, living room, and a half bath, as well as a rear deck. Moving up to the second floor, as you can see there on the floor plans, we're proposing uh, two bedrooms and a bathroom. And then the third floor would be a master suite of sorts with a bedroom, bathroom, and a little bonus office space, as well as the, the walkout deck on the third level. Uh, in terms of the violations, we were cited for two, uh, both of which are fairly typical in this neighborhood. First is FAR, uh, allowed as a 2.0 uh, with the addition and the finished basement. We're proposing a 2.15. And then secondly, we were cited for side yard, 
Uh, you're required to have two and a half feet. However, as we are a row house style building, like many of the surrounding buildings, we're proposing to extend the zero lot line on both the left and the right side. Uh, with that, I will pause and take any questions that the, the board may have. Thank you. Questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimonies? Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, and a budget meeting was held for 32 High Street on November 20th. Uh, following that meeting, the applicant continued to meet and correspond with the budget's with concerns. Um, as a result of those meetings, the applicants made some changes to the plans, including reducing the size of the addition and the deck to increase the rear setback and maintain more of the abutters light, which is one of the major issues that um, abutters had had during the, the meeting and throughout the process. Uh, since that time, this office has received no letters in opposition and has received five in support. With that, we would defer our judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion? Make motion to approve the DPDA and sign here. May I have a second? Okay, Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Loeb? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair sure, also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next, we have case BOA 147-2285 with the address of 344 Brennan Street. Is the, is the applicant and or their representative present? Would they explain to the board, please? Yes, uh, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, 245 Summer Street, East Boston. On behalf of the petitioner, Ahmed Mezat, um, Madam Chair, this is a uh, proposal that was actually originally before the zoning board uh, several years back, uh, where the board had approved a four-story multifamily dwelling on the site. Um, there have been a number of changes in this area, including the um, flood zone as well as the uh, coastal flood resiliency um, overlay district. And uh, we have gone ahead and made some changes uh, to, this, to this project. Uh, if we can jump down to slide, uh, I believe slide three uh, would probably be, yeah, or slide four actually. Maybe one more. So what we're seeing here, Madam Chair, is an existing auto repair facility in this section of Bremen Street, which is located just outside of Day Square, uh, has undergone a significant transformation for uh, residential mixed use and multifamily uh, dwellings. Um, ironically, the uh, auto repair was the norm uh, years ago. Uh, there were a number of auto repair facilities along this section of Bremen Street. Uh, and certainly, as you can see from the photo, there has been uh, significant development in and around uh, the immediate vicinity. Our proposal, if we want to jump down to uh, slide seven, <clears throat> our proposal uh, would be for a four-story multifamily dwelling uh, with a total of six units with parking for six vehicles at the lower level. And again, as I mentioned, this is in a flood zone. Uh, we are limited as to the type of uses that would be allowed at ground level. We did consider uh, having some type of commercial retail. Again, this is located very close to Day Square, uh, where there are a number of retail opportunities already. Uh, and we heard uh, that parking certainly would have been a, a um, more optimal use for this location. This is located directly across from the Bremen Street Park, which is a, uh, an eight acre uh, open space, as well as about 200 yards from the entrance to the MBTA uh, train station at airport uh, for Blue Line. If we want to jump down to the next slide, uh, we can look at the second level. Um, we do have two units uh, per level, ranging in size from about 800, a little over 800 square feet, up to about 1,000 square feet. We do have an ADA adaptable unit here at level two, which is the unit uh, closest to the front. Uh, and then as we go up the building uh, to the third and fourth levels, uh, we have two, again, two levels each. We can probably scroll down to the elevations at slide, uh, slide 13. <clears throat> um, go back, we can go back to 
Yeah, there we go. So we included this slide to show the uh, relationship of the buildings, uh, both left and right. We do a five-story mixed-use building to our left and a uh, three-and-a-half-story uh, building to our right. And this certainly represent uh, appropriate infill um, with a transition in height from the corner block to our right up to the uh, five-story building to our immediate left. Uh, and as you can see, we do uh, pretty much fill out the width of the lot. Uh, we do have setbacks at about one foot each on each side. Uh, but I would also point out to the board that the existing conditions that sit on the site today with the existing auto repairs that pretty much occupies the entire lot all the way back to the uh, rear property line. Our proposal would uh, reduce the overall uh, footprint of the building. We would create a 10 foot setback in the rear. Uh, and then as, I, as you can see here, go up vertically four stories. Um, I'm sure as the board may be aware, and I believe this is the first uh, case, East Boston case that the board is hearing since the BPDA adopted Plan East Boston on Thursday, we are somewhat in a uh, zoning limbo for the community. Uh, Article 53, which was enacted in 1993, uh, is being entirely uh, replaced with uh, the new Plan East Boston recommendations. Uh, this area, which is currently under a 3F2000 zoning subdistrict, uh, would require a number of variances for this project, um, including the use, uh, the height, uh, FAR, uh, and rear yard setback. However, under EBR4, which is the new zoning district that is recommended for this area, uh, this use is considered entirely appropriate under, under Plain East Boston. Multifamily is permitted. There is no FAR maximum under the proposed zoning recommendations. Uh, so therefore, although we are in excess of what the current Article 53 allows for um, FAR, uh, there is no maximum FAR under the new zoning, and therefore this would be, again, appropriate from a density standpoint. Uh, we do meet uh, the new zoning requirements for off-street parking. Uh, under new zoning for East Boston, it will be a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio, so we do, we do propose six parking spaces, one for each unit. Uh, in addition, the height. Uh, currently is limited to three stories, 35 feet. And again, under new zoning, uh, EBR4 would allow for heights of up to uh, 50 feet and four stories. Um, so we believe that while we do require relief under Article 53 currently, uh, that is the East Boston of yesterday. Uh, East Boston of tomorrow uh, would certainly find this project uh, generally aligns with the goals and objectives of Plan East Boston. I will pause there to answer any questions of the board. Thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Uh, Madam Chair, there were comments from the Disability Commission. You want to read them? Into the uh, what they said was that there is no accessible route to the second floor units, and the proposed lift only, only goes to one unit, leaving two units without access. Uh, I can. Res I don't know if our architect is on the call, but I can respond. I did have a chance to review that with the architect. Uh, we do show a lift. Unit 201 is uh, adapt an adaptable unit, uh, so we do have the ability to access that. I believe, based upon my conversation with the architect, that is all that is provide uh, required, uh, and therefore we do comply with the requirements to uh, meet uh, the accessibility uh, issues or address the accessibility issues for one of those units. So Unit 201 as you can see, is the adaptive unit. It does have the lift uh, that is shown in the uh, garage floor plan as well. Thank you. Uh, can you address uh, the comments from BPDA around uh, increasing permeable, permeable area and reducing lot coverage? In yeah. yeah, I did have a chance to speak with the planner from BPDA. And again, I, I think a lot of the recommendations that we will see for the East Boston cases today uh, have, have taken into account a couple of things. First is the interim planning overlay district that's been in place for a little over four years in East Boston. Uh, my understanding that is expired. Uh, so a lot of the recommendations that we do see on the East Boston cases today do reference the iPod. Uh, however, the iPod uh, being expired based upon the adopted recommendations uh, for uh, Plan East Boston uh, would, would certainly be relevant to the conversations for today's cases. As for the permeability and the open space on the site, as I mentioned, uh, the, current, uh, the current auto repair occupancy that is at the site uh, occupies almost 100% of the site today. We do increase 
uh, the, uh, the lock or decrease the lock coverage of the building itself. One thing I would point out to the board, and this is certainly important as we move forward with new cases, especially where there are existing buildings on sites, uh, Plan East Boston does recognize that where there are existing conditions, especially those that are non-conforming, uh, those will no longer, uh, well, there'll be pre-existing non-conforming uh, structures. However, uh, new zoning under Plan East Boston will allow for uh, vertical additions, including uh, dimensional non-conformities. Uh, provided they are within the height limit. So in this particular case, uh, under new zoning, even though we started this process a while ago, we would have the option to maintain the existing garage uh, and erect uh, a vertical addition three stories above, provided that we're under uh, the allowable height limit of 50 feet. Um, that would result in a, you know, a, a setback that is almost at zero in the rear yard, uh, as well as no permeability at all. Uh, our proposal demolishes the existing structure and then rebuilds it and does create a setback in the rear of about 10 feet, uh, which also adds to some uh, permeability on the site as well. So that's a condition that we do actually um, improve upon based upon this proposal. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Uh, yeah, I, I do have a question, Madam Chair, um, and it's for Attorney Lins as well as maybe um, Mr. Hampton from the BPDA. So <laughs> the um, uh, I guess if this was as right under the, the new EBR4, uh, you know, the, the garage obviously sort of consumed the whole first floor and not only takes the existing building, which had the garage on one side and now makes the garage kind of the dominant feature of the building, both the garage entry and the entire first floor use. Uh, so if it doesn't come through the board, is there still any design review that would occur uh, as of right with the BPDA to kind of look at some of those features uh, because I don't know that aesthetically that those are the most pleasing things that are intended to be the outcome of the new zoning. I can I can try to answer from my perspective. I think um, through the chair, Mr. Aiken, the, the current plan, because we have not um, achieved zoning commission approval for Plan East Boston yet, as I mentioned in my earlier comments, we're still somewhat in limbo. So we are operating under current Article 53. And therefore, because relief is still technically necessary, we would uh, be subject to design review. I think going forward, uh, if there are as of right um, conditions, um, those will depend upon whether or not we're in the neighborhood design overlay district uh, or there are other, some other reason for design review, whether it's Article 80 or some other type of trigger. Uh, for most as of right projects, however, uh, once we are out of the iPod, uh, I do not believe there's any elements for design review, and Mr. Hampton can certainly clarify that. If it's a strictly as of right project that does not fall under any uh, neighborhood design overlay guidelines. Yeah, I, I can confirm that, Mr. Aiken. I mean, if it's an as of right project, there's, you know, you would imagine that when somebody is redeveloping a site, you know, no matter who it is, they were going to improve what is already existing. However, you know, as Attorney Lynch has stated, if, it's, if it is indeed an as of right project, um, I don't think we'd see it. Okay, thanks for confirming. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I pull the testimony? Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board, Melodia Gomez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted in a butters meeting for this project on November 14th, 2022. One abutter was present on the call. The applicant also met with the Jeffries Whitney Bird Association and the group voted 10 in favor and eight opposed to the project. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank Good morning, you. chair members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both key card letters from the applicant. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Sebastian Parr from Councilor Coletta's office. The council would like to go and support this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Any other questions from the board? May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Are we including GCOD Javier as a separate? Uh, uh, yeah, you can uh, make a motion to approve for GCOD and do it all in under one, one motion. All right, motion to approve and motion for, to approve GCOD. May I have a second? So, second. All right, Madam Chair, is that with BPD design review? Ms. Panato? Uh, yes, let's add BPD design review. Thank you. Uh, who seconded? Are you? 
Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Are we checking back on uh, Fur Furbush, 81 Furbush? 81 Furbush Road. Um, if there is anyone present to represent their case, Okay, Javier, did you, what, what date did you say to extend well, to? Yeah, to Madam Chair, I don't see them on, it, it's up to the board. They did not communicate or let us know. So if the board wants to defer it, it could be March 26th, but the board has the option to deny without prejudice as well. Uh, may I have a motion? Make a motion to defer until March 26th. May I second. have a second? Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Logue? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Ms. Panato? Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I uh, apologize. We'll need to take a break at this moment for the next case. Uh, there were some advertising issues for this one, so we'll have to reconvene at 11 a.m. Okay, I will see everyone at 11. <laughs>